We spent the morning driving from Lima, Peru, all the way to Paracas. We are Jordan and Soph. After living in Alaska for three years, we decided to quit our jobs to travel internationally for a full year, which has brought us here to Peru. From the coastal deserts to the Andes Mountains, this country is filled with diverse landscapes and rich history that we are excited to explore. Along the way, we stopped at Mirasur. This, I can only relate to like a grandpa's funny farm or some type of funny farm back home, because here we were able to see a Peruvian horse dancing show. and there's also guinea pigs, and they used one of those to do like a little gambling thing where they put it in the middle, spun it around, and then watched to see which hole it went into. <laughs> Careful, that might be a, someone's meal tonight. Is he gonna turn into someone's meal? Yeah, he's gonna eat him. But this is not always too small. Ah, uh, uh, too small. Just to get fatter first. <laughs> more food, they need more food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the guinea pig, okay, need to know which is the lucky number. What you have to do, scream or shout your number, okay? Yes. <laughs> Just your number, okay? Okay, ready? Okay. This guinea pig speak, speak English and Spanish. Okay? <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Thank you. I ended up being one of the winners and won some bread. It was absolutely delicious. We just made it here to Prakas and are walking around. I did not realize that this was like such a beach town. Now we're gonna go try and find some lunch. We're hoping to find some seafood. I'm sure there's a lot here just so we can kind of try some of the local cuisine. waiting to be able to check into our hotel at two so we found a little restaurant here right next to the harbor they brought to our table these little nuts that are roasted and have salt on them i don't know what they are but they're really delicious so we just got our sampler platter for lunch what we have is kausa with tuna and i believe kausa is a type of cake made out of potato then we have seafood and rice. I really like the presentation with the seashell. Then we have traditional ceviche and fish nuggets. So here we go, lots to try. I'm gonna start with the kausa because I have not had it yet. And it was one of the traditional Peruvian dishes I really wanted to try. It's actually really good. It's cold, not hot. I'm not sure what's drizzled on the top. The potato cake is good, and I do like tuna. Next is the rice with seafood. It didn't say what kind of seafood it is. Looks like shrimp. Lots of flavor to this one. It looks like there's also Parmesan and tomatoes. Really, really good. So it seems like this is just some type of white fish. Maybe like cod or something like that. Deep fat fried to make these nuggets out of. Not bad, not my favorite. Now time for the ceviche. Looks like this ceviche has some big pieces of corn. It was also served with a purple potato on the side. And I think this is some type of fish. I don't know what though. Really good ceviche. Again, I like to eat ceviche with tortilla chips because that's how I'm used to having it, but really refreshing ceviche, which is also Peru's national dish, so you gotta have it. And this cost us around 12 US dollars, which is 50 soles, which is the currency here in Peru. Now we're gonna dive in. So we've kind of noticed that here, everyone's just trying to sell you something, whether it be tours or little trinkets, whatever it might be. But the newest one of the day 
is we just saw two guys basically selling like a photo op with some pelicans. They were like, um, you know, if you gave them some money, they would throw up some food and then the pelicans would try and eat the food and just proved for a very good photo op. But anyway, it's just another way to try and make money here. So we just checked into our hotel and I'm super excited about it because it's our first hotel stay for this year long trip. We've been roughing it out in some cheap Airbnbs, but this hotel was only $40 a night. It was recommended to us by our Peru hop tour that we're currently traveling through Peru with. So it was a great recommendation, super beautiful clean room, and the best part is we have a view of the ocean. For some reason, we're not really sure why exactly. Um, the electricity is out in the whole city of Paracas until four o'clock. No one can tell us if it's normal or if this is just a specific occurrence. But yeah, we don't have electricity until four o'clock today. We don't know why. Now we're just gonna kick back and relax for the rest of the day. It's been a long travel day, busing here, um, walking around. So we're just gonna relax, take it easy before we get up early tomorrow for paragliding. That seafood that we just got done eating is doing something funny in my stomach. Not sure how tonight's gonna go, but it's definitely time to go take a nap and hope we can sleep it off. All right, so a bit of an interesting night tonight. I was able to sleep off that seafood or whatever, woke up from a nap feeling a lot better. However, we still don't have electricity. The entire town is without electricity right now. We got into town around noon. It is currently about seven o'clock at night. So it's been a full seven hours of no electricity here. We were told that it was supposed to be back on around four. Four came and gone and then we're told six. Six came and gone. And now we're being told eight to nine, but I mean, at this point, who knows when we're gonna get, let, get electricity back. And without electricity, there's no running water. So on top of not having lights or you know any electrical, we also don't have running water. So like the toilet doesn't work, can't wash your hands, can't take a shower. But yeah, it's already eight o'clock and still nothing. So it's 15 minutes later. I guess all we had to do was complain about it because the lights are back on. Fingers crossed that they stay on. But we finally have running water and electricity. Amazing. Good morning. It's the next day here in Paracas. We're just quickly packing up inside. Then we're gonna go grab the hotel breakfast before Jordan goes a paragliding. And then we go to a national park. So it's gonna be a fun day. Here we go. Be safe. <laughs> So they just took up Jordan and a sketchy car that did not make the first attempt. Second attempt was more successful. Right behind me is the landing spot. Not at all sure what's going on. Doesn't quite seem like a legit tour, but we're just hoping he makes it down in one piece. We made it to the top. All right. Okay. Run, 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 come on, come on, come on, run, run. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Very good. Feels 
like we're a lot higher now that we're not by the hill. Yeah, you see my thing. Run. Run? Yes. I'm running. Yay! Woo! <laughs> that was, okay, that was smooth. That was a good landing. Do you like it? Yes, it was a lot of fun. So good to get Yeah. Oh, was it? Oh, a lot of fun. There's a point where we like went spinning and circling. What did you say? After paragliding, because our tour was running a little bit late, they quickly rushed us all the way back over to our tour bus. And by rushed us, I mean I feel like we we're going like 70 miles down a gravel road, but we made it in time to hit our tour bus. And now we're out here checking out more of the national park. Right now we're at um, like a viewpoint called the cathedral. And unfortunately back in 2007, there was a 7.9 earthquake that destroyed this cathedral. So it used to be like an arch. However, the earthquake crushed the arch and now it just kind of looks like an island out in the middle of the water. It's crazy how quickly the temperature changes. Like this morning, it was super cold. I was wearing a sweatshirt. Now we're out here and it's super sunny. However, there's a strong wind coming off the ocean. So now I'm like kind of chilly again, even though I got so warm while I was like paragliding. So behind us is a red sand beach and behind the red beach is a little town where 10 people currently live with their fishing boats because they lived there generations before this natural park was preserved. Um, so they were grandfathered in and they still live here today. So we're at our last stop here in this national park and our last stop for our time here in Paracas. We're now closer to the Red Sand Beach, which our guide said there's only five to six red beaches in the world, which is crazy because we've been to another Red Sand Beach in Maui. Um, the red color comes from volcanic eruptions that used to happen when the area was underwater and the magnesium in the rocks is what creates the red color you see behind me. If you like this video and our time in Paracas, which is an underrated destination, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you as we continue through Peru. Peru.